Hi, I'm Zach with Flashcut CNC, and today we're going to be installing a limit switch kit on your Bridgeport Series 1 knee mill. Now, the benefits of a limit switch kit are both to prevent over travel and to establish a machine zero, which is essential for any sort of production run. These are all the parts you'll be receiving in your limit switch kit. First of all, we have the x axis limit switch bracket with the y axis limit switch brackets and the z axis limit switch bracket. Five compact industrial limit switches all mounting hardware as well as our wiring harness to connect to the controller. The first step to installing your limit switch kit is to pre-assemble the X and Y axis limit switch brackets. So first we're going to assemble the X axis bracket. So we'll take the X axis mounting bracket and two switches and using our M5 by 10 millimeter socket head cap screws we will secure it to the bracket. So now we have our x-axis limit switch bracket assembled. We have both the plus and minus switches on it. And make note of the orientation of the rocker arms because we need to make sure that they can contact the end stops on the machine. Now we will be pre-assembling the Y plus limit switch bracket. So we will mount our switch to our bracket and make note of the arm orientation that it's away from the main plate of the bracket. And again, we're using M5 screws to secure this bracket. Now we have our Y plus limit switch bracket assembled and we move on to the Y minus limit switch bracket. We will now assemble our Y minus limit switch bracket. Now we're going to mount the switch to the bracket in this orientation making note of the roller arm again that's away from the main plate. And we're using M5 screws to secure the switch to the bracket. Now we have our Y minus limit switch bracket assembled and we'll move on to mounting our brackets through the machine. The first bracket we're going to install is the x-axis bracket. So first we need to remove the table stop bracket and then we're going to install our limit switch bracket on top of that. We're just going to remove the two bolts holding the table stop bracket in place. Make sure you keep the two 3-8 socket head cap screws because we're going to reuse those for mounting our bracket. To install our x-axis limit switch bracket, we will take the bracket, slide on the 3-8 socket head cap screw that's holding on the table stop bracket through the hole and then slide a 3 8 washer behind to offset it from our saddle. And then install the other bolt as well. Then securely tighten both bolts. Now we will be installing the Z-axis limit switch bracket and we're going to be removing the depth scale on the quill in order to mount this bracket. So remove the two 632 pan head screws as well as the scale. Make sure we hold on to the 632 pan head screws because we're going to be reusing those for installing our Z-axis limit switch bracket. First we'll be installing this anchor into the quill stop in order to give us a good contact point for our limit switch. We will need to insert this shim in order to make the anchor fit securely in the quill stop. So slide the shim into the quill stop now and then we're going to want to slide our anchor into that shim. Now make sure that the threaded side goes in towards the machine because we need to insert a screw on the opposite side. You may come across a situation where the anchor is not expanding uniformly so it's not getting tightened into the quill stop. In that case I would use a quarter inch washer on your quarter 20 bolt and that way it will cause, help it to expand uniformly. Now that we have the anchor installed, we will mount the bracket to the machine. Now to mount the bracket, we're going to use the same 632 bolts that we're holding on the scale. So we'll just get it into position and then use those bolts to hold it in place. Now we're going to be mounting the limit switch to the bracket. Um, it's easiest to do this if you move the quill stop down. Now our Z-axis limit switch has been installed. Next we're going to be installing the Y plus limit switch bracket. Now that's going to be mounted right here below the saddle and it's the, actually the longer of the two brackets. To mount this bracket we're going to be using a 3 8 bolt and we're going to also use a 3 8 washer. So slide the washer on the bolt and then simply slide the bolt through the bracket and mount it to the machine. 
So first we want to hand tighten it just to place it and then make sure that we're not limiting any travel by where the bracket's mounted here. And once the position looks good, we're going to secure it in place. Now we will be installing the Y minus limit switch bracket and we'll be using the same 3 8 bolt that we did in the Y plus bracket. First we want to slide the 3 8 bolt into the 3 8 washer and then through the bracket and then we're going to thread it onto the machine. And again, we want to hand tighten it into position where we want it. Again, making sure we don't limit any travel and then we'll tighten it down. Now we have all five limit switches mounted to the machine. We just want to go through and manually move the machine to make sure they trip in the correct position. Uh, that way we can maximize our travel. So for the x-axis, we're going to jog the machine back and forth and adjust these stop knobs in order to make sure they trip the switch when we're at the limit of travel. What I suggest is actually jogging to the limit of travel and backing off about a quarter inch so you can prevent any potential over travel. So I've moved the machine into position here where it is actually hitting a hard stop and then I'm going to back it off about a quarter inch. So let me do that and then I've loosened the stop knob and I'm going to slide it until it trips the switch so that we know when the table's in this position it will hit the limit switch before it actually hits a hard stop. We can test it to make sure it doesn't crash. So that's how you set up the x-axis limits. To adjust the y-axis limit switches we're going to jog the saddle back and forth to make sure it contacts the switch before it hits a hard stop. Um, to adjust the, the, where the switch trips you can either adjust the bracket mounting or the roller arm itself. So now I can feel the switch trip and then about a half turn later we hit a hard stop. So I know that the switch is going to trip before we hit a hard stop. Now we're going to do that on the other end of the axis. And again on this axis I hit, felt the switch trip and then about a half turn later I hit a hard stop. So we know that the switches on the Y axis are correctly set up. For the z-axis, we're going to need to move the quill up and contact the switch and we want to make sure we do it as close to a hard stop as possible to maximize our z-axis travel. And then if you need to adjust the switch, you can either loosen the bracket and slide it up or down either way or you can adjust the roller arm to make sure you have maximum travel on the z-axis. Now that our switches are mounted, we're going to go ahead and connect up our wiring harness so that we can connect to our controller. So I'm going to start with the x-axis and move on to the y and the z. Now it's important to make note which switch you're wiring up. So this is going to be our x minus, this is our x plus, this is our y plus, and then y minus is mounted in the back, and then this is our z plus. Now your wiring harness is numbered. Uh, by input line. So input line 1 is going to be for your X minus switch. Input line 2 will then be for your X plus limit switch. Input line 3 is for your Y minus limit switch. Input line 4 is for your Y plus limit switch. And then input line 5 is for your Z plus limit switch. First I'll be hooking up the X minus limit switch. To do this we're going to need to unscrew the case. And that exposes our screw terminals for actually hooking up the limit switch. Once we slide the cover off, then we'll go ahead and insert the wire into the boot. And then we'll go ahead and secure these wires onto the screw terminals. Now since this is a simple switch, it's not important which terminal you hook to which wire. Uh, it can be either way. Now we have the wire secure, I'm going to go ahead and reattach the cover. So now the X minus switch is wired up, we'll go ahead and wire up the Y plus switch. Again, the X plus switch is going to be wired to input line 2, so make sure you select the correct wire. Go ahead and feed the wire through the boot and attach as you did the X minus switch. Now the wires are secured down, we're going to go ahead and reattach the cover. So now I have both X limit switches wired up. 
If you want to clean up the wiring so it's not going all over the place, I suggest using uh, some sort of cable tie with a self-adhesive on the back. That way you can just stick it onto the machine and then get these wires out of the way. The Y minus switch is going to be hooked up to input line 3, so we want to make sure we select the th number 3 wire. So go ahead and remove the cover and install this wire. Now that we have the wire secure, we'll go ahead and reinstall the cover. Now we're going to go ahead and wire up the Y plus limit switch, and that uses input line 4. So we just want to verify that we have the number 4 wire. So just remove the cover, insert the wire, and then we'll close it back up. Finally, we're going to be wiring up the Z plus limit switch, so make sure you find the wire that's level 5 for input line number 5. Now we have all five switches hooked up and we're going to go ahead and reroute some of the cables so they're out of the way and then connect it to our controller. Now that we have the limit switches wired up, we're going to go ahead and plug in the other end of the wiring harness into our input connector on our Pro Series servo controller. Now we have the limit switches hooked up to our input lines, we will now go in the software and configure those input lines for these limit switches. So we're going to go to Configuration, I.O., Input Lines, and we've already pre-configured the five switches we're using, but I'll go through how we would set this up right here. So right now we're looking at the fifth input line and we need that to be for our Z plus limit switch. So I'll hit the drop down here and select it as a home slash limit. So we can both home to it and if we accidentally over travel and hit the switch it will stop the program. And then under location we'll need to define the switch as our Z plus location. And you can see here it populates this description panel for the Z plus home limit. And that's all you need to do to set the switch. It's already by default set as a normally closed wiring, which is the way we wired it. We'll go ahead and hit OK. It'll set, it'll set those settings, and now we've got to go to File and select Save Setup. So one way to check to make sure all the wiring is correct for your limit switches is to go to Controller here on the main screen and select Input Line Status. And this displays the status of all your input lines, and anything with a description is actually defined. Um, so you can see 1 through 5, which is our X plus minus, our Y plus minus, and our Z plus switches uh, are reading closed and green. That means that they're in their normal state. So we can go through and hit each switch individually and make sure it trips on the, in the software uh, to verify that the wiring is correct. All right, so I'm going to trip the X minus switch. And I'm going to trip the X plus switch. Now the Y minus switch, the Y plus switch, and our Z plus switch. And we can see all the states change so we know everything's wired properly. To demonstrate the function of the limit switch, I'm going to jog the X axis in the negative direction until it hits the switch. And then the machine will stop. Now you can see Flashcut throws up a message saying that the limit switch has been tripped and that you're required to jog in the opposite direction off of the switch in order to proceed with functionality. Now, next I'm going to home the machine, so I'm going to jog close to the home switch and then go ahead and hit the home button in the software. So now I'm close to the home switches, so I'll go to the home panel on the main screen and select home and each axis will touch off the home switch so we'll know the machine zero position. Now our machine zero has been set so we can use fixture offsets and other helpful production features. And you can see in the software there's a cyan box created that shows the envelope in which the machine is able to move. So the software limits the mobility of the machine so it cannot crash or damage anything. So you can see how easy it is to install this limit switch kit on your Bridgeport machine and configure it using flash cut controls for both limit sensing and homing. For more information on installing a ball screw or the motor mounts, please see our other videos.
If you have any questions at all, please feel free to give us a call at 1-888-88-FLASH or visit us on our website at flashcutcnc.com. Thank you very much for your time.